start on the feed December 7th, 2012. On the show this week, uh, we are going to be getting to the Council of Great Relevance shortly. Uh, we're going to be talking about geek, geek gifts, um, and we have a, uh, a great show planned, and it sort of fell apart, but we'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> Um, we have uh, a lot of great guests. We're going to uh, um, introduce every our top story first, and you'll also notice that we have no actual production or anything because the show is actually being done in a Google Hangout, and that's all. And I suppose I should be putting myself up on the stream while I'm uh, doing the majority of the talking. Uh, Vince, tell us what this top story is. Uh, this top story is in another window somewhere. Um, uh, basically, in a nutshell, uh, the Star Trek, the, the trailer for it, uh, the first one came out. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. in Japanese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I had planned to talk on the show about the uh, poster for Star Trek. Star Trek 2009-2, colon, Into Darkness. Um, the, uh, the poster, it's, I'm sure everybody has seen it. If you listen to the show, you have to have all very uh, Dark Knight feel to it with, you know, working the shape of the, the, uh, the Starfleet A, you know, shape thing uh, into, you know, broken out wall and then destruction and all that. Um, but I love that poster because JJ is letting us geeks keep our, keep Star Trek for us and not just uh, turning it into something something crazy. The poster doesn't say Star Trek on it. It doesn't say Star Trek is the new Star Wars or anything like that. It's the very um, just kind of laid back. You know, people that are not geeks will look at this poster and say, "Oh, okay, yeah, it's a, a disaster movie, little indie thing going on." There. And so we get to you know actually keep some of that for ourselves. And uh, hopefully this is going to work. I am going to uh, play the trailer down. Uh, the uh, I don't know. It's a minute and seventeen seconds long. So, but I'm going to play it now. So, so everybody watch. I was hoping there would be a little more noise to it. Um, <laughs> was anybody else hearing it? No. No. Okay. Right. Well, that's kind of crazy. Show us the bit top. And top. Well, we're just going to watch the imagery and pretend like we don't understand anything. We can act it out. Yeah. Because I haven't actually seen it. So. I was going to surprise myself by watching the trailer. Is that how you spell Abrams in Japanese? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's badass. Oh, my. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, audience, if you can't hear this. Um, but please take it upon yourselves to uh, find the trailer. Oh. Uh, that's, yeah, an underwater movie. <laughs> uh, take it upon yourself. Go, go watch the trailer again. And, uh, so you can hear it all. And we're watching the Japanese one because the last few seconds are... Uh, I'll bet that was really cool. That's awesome. I don't know what was special about it, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I haven't actually seen the trailer. So, um, I mean, I. Um, uh, which one of us has heard the audio for that trailer? John. Yeah, I, I've heard it. Yeah. Okay, the, I John, think the, John, I think the, tra tra translate for us. I think the uh, the special bit is right at the very end with the big splash. I think that kind of gives uh, gives a bit of a way. Okay. But. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure they can link to the show notes if they're not watching live. Casey, they can have a look at the uh, have yes. a look at the trailer for themselves. I think. Yes, absolutely. It will be it, in the show notes. Like I said, plus. It is pretty okay. awesome. Uh, yeah, just the imagery. So now I'm going to have to see. I totally have to wait till the show is over 
uh, to go watch the thing. Okay, and uh, was there anything else that we needed to talk about as far as news goes before we uh, introduce everybody in, in our uh, mess of the show, Vince? There's also a uh, Superman poster that came out this week, um, but it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, never mind that. All right. <laughs> John Hyman. John Hyam. <laughs> ah! Oh, boy. I am very sorry. I will edit that out of the night. <laughs> I promise. But, yeah, be, being live on the Internet, this, this is great. <laughs> and... Uh, we will um, uh, ha have uh, lots of words from you in uh, the coming uh, Council of Great Northerns. Also with us uh, from a secure, non-disclosed location <laughs> is Christine Meyer. Um, she is going to have uh, lots of uh, uh, geek gift ideas. And uh, broadcasting from the singularity that is nearby... <laughs> Uh, Michael Foley is with us as well. He's going to have uh, uh, much to contribute. So um, let, let's jump right into this. Uh, it's the Council of Great Relevance. We're discussing geek gifts, and uh, we have a great... Uh, um, let's get started. Uh, who threw out the steampunk fan? Was that you, Vince? No, that's Christine. Okay, Christine, hmm? we're, we're going to start with you. Tell us about for the steampunk fan. Well, my favorite website is called Clockwork Couture. Uh -huh. When I dressed up steampunk for Halloween, that's where I got all my stuff. Uh -huh. um, they have a particular section just for holiday gifts, but they have like the coolest steampunk clothes. They have jewelry, posters, um, and it's just so it's just Clockwork and then Couture, which is C O U T U R E dot com. And I don't know, there's just so much stuff, but on there. Um, they have like their gifts group where you can look for gifts under like ten dollars. Um, let's see some of the stuff on here. Do, 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 do. Um, well, the under ten dollars aren't any fun. I need more expensive gifts. Let's look at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's lots. Of, I mean, they have um, like. Um, let's see here. When, when well, you talk about more expensive they, gifts... They, they have uh, Dapper Dan's gift wrap. Oh, yeah, the mustaches. Mustache and, ones. and they have the ornaments that are mustaches. In fact, I got to get Yeah, they have, like, aviator goggles, um, bags. They have boots. I, I love their clothes. I always eye it and wish I could, you know, buy all of it. But, you know, that's just me. Um... If you guys are fans of Felicia Day, you will notice that on the website she actually models some of the clothes, like some of their that's stuff. That's where that's where I heard the, the, the name before. Yeah, and there's now a that uh, I think about it. Yeah, it's uh, one one of the outfits that she has and stuff too is there's a uh, there's a steampunk codex there, mm -hmm. um, and then um, more affordable than that though, there's this uh, military corset with. Tales that I uh, um, yeah. that I've been intending to get for my wife for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Not really a couple of years. I mean, it's only been out there for like a year, but that's that's one uh, that's on my list. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, the uh, the audience is seeing what I'm showing, but um, I am trying to share uh, screen, and it has all the. If you see it, good for you, but I can't, so I. Okay. This is our first semi-successful um, Google Hangout attempt to do this again. I don't even want to talk about why I had to uh, um, pull out the wire uh, cutter. Yeah, another kind of cool first thing time. about first this. Time. Go ahead. Another kind of cool thing about this website, because I'm, you know, a girl, is they actually their clothes. If anybody. You guys probably not didn't watch it, but America's Next Top Model, one of their photo shoots they did was in this company's clothes. Really? Um, yeah. Right. So they did like a steampunk photo shoot um, on the website. Some of the, the photos, I recognize them because I watch America's Next Top Model, and that was kind of cool that they integrated that. I'll, into... I'll find the clip, but it's not, it's not sufficient to make me watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you you know you probably don't need to watch the show. You could probably just look at the pictures and mm -hmm. see just the cool steampunk outfits that they're in. Yeah. It was it was very cool. Awesome. Okay, so Clockwork 
Couture.com. And we got there's a link to that in the show notes. Awesome and uh, 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 lost my show notes. Okay, <laughs> uh, the uh, expensive Star Wars hoodie. <laughs> that was that was on my list <laughs> too. So that's one of the things that you want. Yes, the expensive. I'm I'm a cheapskate. I don't like to spend a lot of money on clothes. <laughs> and these hoodies, if you um. It's the company that's making them is Echo, the E C K O, you know, um, one of those brand name fancy. And so, if you want to get a nice, um, you know, like Bubba, Bubba Fett or uh -huh. Boba Fett, sorry, it's like 180 bucks. But, but you know, there you go. It's pretty cool. But Christine, the cool part about the Boba Fett one isn't that it's a, it's not a sweatshirt. That's actually like a school jacket, like a Letterman's yeah, jacket. It's like yeah. a Letterman's jacket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, 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 in fact, I wouldn't doubt it if there is actually a uh, a high school in our country somewhere with <laughs> god awful colors like that. But <laughs> this this is also the company that sells the uh, the the Star Wars um, stormtrooper hoodies, yeah. where they they zip up to form a stormtrooper helmet. So. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of and it zips up the front of the, the face. And, you know, and that's that's only ninety eight dollars. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a little um, expensive for my taste, but maybe if I, mm -hmm. you know, find someone rich that can buy me gifts, I don't know. So anybody out there that you know wants to drop a couple hundred dollars on Christine, <laughs> by all means, you should do that. So Christine, are you going after the hoodie, or are you going yeah, after the Letterman's jacket? Um. You know what? I would well, probably go after the Letterman jacket. Hmm. I kind of don't. Choice. Has the Mandalorian symbol on there, which is awesome. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It says bounty hunter on the back. Yeah, I'm looking. You kind of don't want to give yourself away like that if you're a bounty hunter, though. You don't want to go around <laughs> saying I'm a bounty hunter. I don't think but, Boba Fett would need to uh, label himself. <laughs> oh yeah, there. Okay, yeah, the bounty. Yes. All right. Yeah, the Mandalorian symbol with the, the horns. Okay. Does the stormtrooper have stormtrooper written on it? <laughs> just in case, just in case you don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's the only one that's that just that's a Letterman jacket, right? Which I just about them. Um, excellent. And let's see here. Um, let's break this up a little bit so we don't have uh, Christine talking hey, hey, Casey. Every, everything all at once. Casey, yeah. while we're talking clothing, can I, may I interject? Um, yes, you can. Awesome. Hey, um, one of the things that I found out there that, uh, that I think is like one of the most awesome things that you can get somebody, and I'm posting the link right there in the forum, but, um, and I happen to have one right here. <laughs> Commercial. Ugly, ugly sweaters. That's a Christmas time, right? <gasps> Batman. Which one? This is the yeah. Oh, you're. Oh. It's a Batman sweater, not a sweatshirt, a sweater. Mm. Oh no! I hope this isn't where the world is going. And you know, not because, only that, no, because I, I, I think you know, I'm, like I'm, when people hit a certain age, they start wearing sweaters. <laughs> I, I wear sweaters all the time, Casey. I love sweaters. Sweaters are fantastic. They keep me warm. Yeah. Okay. But when people start getting I'm start seeing, I'm seeing, their sweaters, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm seeing a business model. Somebody on Etsy should start cable knitting Superman sweatshirts. Ah, there is there is a Superman sweatshirt also at that same site. Um, the site, by the way, well, is no. um, is uh, superhero stuff dot com. And here's the link to the Superman one. They also have one, if you're a fan of the Flash, they've got one there too. Um, they're high quality. They seem to be durable and stuff, and they're lovely. Uh, a total, uh, a large selection of sizes and everything. So, fantastic gift for the geek. In your life. And, and all I can think of is, is great Diane just saying, oh, how fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I do not. Know. I, 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 yeah. I don't know. Because I, when uh, our predecessors were young, who knows? Maybe the designs that were on the sweaters, you know, like the little reindeers. I mean, that, that was cool. <laughs> 
one of one of the things also Christine mentioned also is uh, she mentioned she she mentioned uh, clothing for girls, which which I think finding clothing for girls is actually especially with like a geek theme is actually really difficult. Yeah. I just uh, li put a link to an Etsy store there in the uh, forum. Go follow rabbits is the name of the store. Now, uh, Christine, you should check this place out. Um, they have all these these. Basically, they go and they have this custom printed fabric, and they make skirts out of it. Um, they've got a couple different models of TARDIS, um, some R two D two. There is a uh, there's a Star Trek insignia <gasps> one, a Captain America. Uh, oh, and there's a Death Star one. Just saying, those it's are awesome. Nice. I'm looking at the Tri Star arm warmers. Ah, uh, yes, they have lots of arm warmer warmers too. I've never really understood the purpose of arm warners. However, sweaters I can understand the purpose of. <laughs> for uh, for completely the other side of the year, I found a, uh, a really cool site for uh, geeky swimwear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I, I, I put the link in the in in the uh, in the text as well for you to have a look at. But uh, that's yeah, that's, yeah, I, uh, that's still superherostuff.com. Com. And not only do they have geeky swimwear, John, but did you notice that they have geeky lingerie? I did, but I wasn't going to bring that up because it's a family show. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it's what we in the States like to call PG-13. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, are, are we post-watershed, John? <laughs> well, well, you are in the UK, so that's all right. <laughs> okay, I just found some... Yeah, uh, no, nobody in the UK is, is listening. Okay, I just found some great boxers that I just love uh, where the symbol is there on the superhero. I think Scott <laughs> might need those. <laughs> the power right there. Um, Sorry, anyway. The, yeah, no. Oh, that's <laughs> and, really and the fly impressive. opens and what, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. The um, ring. Anyway, I, I I am not embarrassed to mention that I do purchase underwear from this site, um, so I have I have several pairs and stuff. While we're talking underwear, though, I just put another link in there to foreplaycatalog.com. They have got an entire selection <laughs> of superhero lingerie costumes. The one that I linked to is actually kind of a theme on Wonder Woman. Um, I appreciate how they intentionally misspelled foreplay. So. Uh, yeah. Well, and they, they also, they misplay, yeah. The, instead of Wonder Woman, it's just American Hero is the name of the costume. <laughs> but um, it's brilliant, and it's a fantastic costume. Um, it, it takes me back to, I don't know if you guys remember in Friends, but there was like an episode where, where Rachel had to wear um, the yeah. Princess Leia Princess costume, Leia, yeah. uh -huh. you know? And, and it, that kind of took me back and everything. It was like, uh, you know, when I think about it, no, I would much rather have Wonder Woman. <laughs> so Princess Leia get, kind of creeps me out. But um, that's me. Why? Well, and then she has the rope, right? So that makes it even better. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Wonder Woman Wonder Woman as a character and stuff goes back. Um, basically, her creator was into bondage and everything. And so, I mean, there's a... <laughs> There's an entire R-rated episode of Sci-Fi Circles so we can go off into here. Yeah. But let's just yeah. say, but, geek but they themed are lingerie. Awesome <laughs> gift idea. Yes, yes. But they Maybe are this both, should be a Valentine's Day episode. Oh. What, what was that, Michael? They are both self-rescuing princesses. That's yeah, true. There you go. They are. Empowered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we like to call that low maintenance. <laughs> Uh, Christine, I noticed that's that right, in your awesome. links, by the way, you have a link to heruniverseshop.com. You want to tell us about that? Um, I love this because, well, except for she stole my idea. But um, years ago when I went to the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas and went to the gift shop, me and my friend were wandering around and they have the t-shirts with the huge screen print on huge t-shirts of like Star Trek stuff. And my friend, who was kind of a preppy and dressed better than me, was like, wouldn't it be nice if they just had a polo shirt with, like, a Klingon logo, you know, logo or something subtle? And so you could be a geek, but not like you're walking around like a big poster. So um, this site was actually created by... Oh, I have to get her name up here. What's her name? Ashley it's Eckstein? Is that how you say it? Eckstein, yes. And do you know who she Oops. is? Christine? Yeah, she's the voice of... Uh, I don't watch the Clone Wars, but she's the, the voice of Asaka Tano on yeah. on Star Wars: The Clone Wars. 
Yeah, so her whole thing is she started this because she wanted, you know, female fans to have clothes that they could wear for geek things, you know, to let it know that girls can like this stuff too. I love, she has some little kid clothes um, for that character from Clone Wars. I don't know the name because I don't watch it, but my niece dressed up like that character for Halloween, and I was thinking, wow, this would have been such a cooler costume to have gotten it off this site. Yeah. But yeah, they ha she has some great cute clothes on there that I was, you know, I would probably buy all of it. But again, I'll just have to I hit would up like Scott. A, a whole line. I would like a whole line of the clothing that is sort of stealth superhero, just a, a, a pale green uh, polo <laughs> shirt with a little green lantern logo. Yeah, so it's like well, just something that's work appropriate, no matter yeah. what your work situation is. And and on the subject of work appropriate kind of superhero clothing and stuff, there's a company out there called WeLoveFine.com, and they actually have got uh, a couple different lines that are along those. They are polo shirts. They have a Star Wars series and a Marvel series that are actually both very appropriate for work. Um, they also have an Adventure Time series, and for some odd reason, they've got a My Little Pony series. But <laughs> the, they know uh, their audience. I'm sorry, that's just. If, if you take a look, though, at their, their Star Wars collection and their Marvel collection, it's, it's exactly what you're talking about and what Christine was talking about. You know, it's, it's very subtle. It's just a small logo, and, and it's, it's very nice, very well done, very professional. So only if fellow squint, geeks. Can you tell the difference? If you squint, can you tell the difference between Polo and My Little Pony? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It, the, the My Little Pony polo shirts... <laughs> Are basically they've got the 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 logos from the ponies' butts on them where the logo goes on the shirt. Yeah. Nice. So it's it, stupid. It, it, it's, nice. it's the rainbow tail, right? I mean, I oh. that would be the, the logo for you. The logos on these almost seem a little too big. Like they need to shrink them, just like. That's always been my problem with them. That's the reason why I didn't purchase a bunch for work. Because um, yeah. the first time that I saw them was when they came out with their Marvel collection. And if you take a look at their Marvel collection, really the only shirts that are, you know, that I'd probably wear to work would be the Avenger one. Um, the rest are almost, because the logo is so large, they almost seem too gaudy. Um, they just added a Deadpool one, though. I hadn't seen that one before, and I would actually purchase that one in a heartbeat. So if anybody's looking for a gift for me, <laughs> the Deadpool Marvel Polo, because nobody at work would get it anyway, is only $28, and it's available at welovefine.com. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to jump in, and um, <laughs> basically I, I, I'm going to take the seriously lowbrow role here and uh, just kind of uh, point out some of the uh, great stuff that Pink Geek spammed me with in uh, their last one. The first thing is Star Wars socks. <laughs> uh, and they have they have some awesome socks that are uh, they're kind of high on the leg, but they're black up past the ankle, and then above that is a white stripe, uh, empire symbol, and another white stripe. So you could totally wear that with your business wear and get away with it. And then they also have you know uh, some 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 more girly ones that are uh, uh, basically R two D two that runs from your foot all the way up to your knee. Um, there's a, uh, a tar TARDIS 4GB uh, flash drive that on a keychain, which is awesome. The, yeah, the top comes off. Really cool. Uh, there is a sonic screwdriver toothbrush. Oh, there you go. And and th that's the one that, 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 that just speaks to me. I don't have to buy like five of them, just so I always will have them. I got a thick gift certificate for my birthday, and I think you just told me what I'm going to get with it. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, and there's, there's one other thing that they had at ThinkGeek, and I don't know if it's uh, specific to ThinkGeek or not, but it is a blue book called Doctor Who 500-Year Diary Journal. It is, uh, like I said, a blue book. It's got really stiff, old-looking paper. It's about an inch thick. And uh, it, it looks uh, very, very similar to the, the books that uh, River Song and the Doctor. Is it in the picture? Is it open or is it just that thick? Oh no, no, no it's just open, so you can see the cover. And, um, it just, yeah, it says, it says 500 years. <sighs> but yeah, that is a must-have for who he is. I don't know. The text is kind of like writing Mandalorian Warrior in the back of your hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yes, but but it's uh, yes, I agree. Maybe on the spine, a, a nice, I'm looking at, on the, the spine, and just make the cover look like the TARDIS. Yeah, the, right. Well, no, it, it looks like the the books that uh, uh, River Song and uh, the Doctor were carrying around with them. Well, mm -hmm. no, those had the like the panels, like the TARDIS. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they did. Well, they were TARDIS blue, um, and they were very similar to this, and it is, you know, authorized Dr. Who Um But <laughs> other than that, I, I, I do seem to remember the, the actual prop from the TV show. It's a little slicker than that. But this is still pretty damn cool. It's $12.99. Right. I wouldn't doubt it if, you know, somebody makes the And the pages look 500 years old already. Yeah. Now, hey, Casey? Yes. Uh, John posted a link there in the forum to a fantastic site that I think we should go visit next. Is that the uh, the Black Milk site? <laughs> exactly. Hey. They're the guys that make um, those famous R2-D2 and C-3PO uh, swimsuits. That oh, hit yes. the, uh, Yeah, they hit, hit the net Haven't about a year ago. Um, Haven't they, they only released them. takedown notices? Oh, I don't know, but they're due they, to release the, the um, history of that. Yes, it's abs it, Michael's absolutely correct. Um, Lucasfilm sued them. Uh, um, the two of the both Lucasfilm and Black Milk Co Clothing they came to an agreement, and now Black Milk Clothing is producing uh, a, a large number of Star Wars themed outfits. Um, if you go to the site, you'll notice that right now, as we're recording, we're about four days away from the next release of Star Wars uh, themed clothing. Um, they've had two previous releases and stuff, including additional swimsuits. Um, there's a, a Han Solo swimsuit, for instance, and a Darth Vader swimsuit called the Force. Um, but uh, um, you know, John is is absolutely correct. It's uh, very popular, and, and not just for Star Wars. Um, they've got um, there's a, a set of leggings here. <laughs> they sell leggings of every variety of every uh, 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 every possible thing you could imagine. Yeah, about a year ago I bought from my wife the, uh, and they don't seem to have them, um, probably because they were violating copyright with them, but the uh, Harley Quinn um, uh, <laughs> leggings that they called something else. So They're red and black, right? I mean, yep, they're red and black and they've got the diamonds on them. Okay, well if they have the diamonds right, on them, then yeah. Okay. Right, and just changing the name wasn't sufficient? <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, because the, the the diamond, the three diamond pattern is, is uh, the uh, right. Now I can't help but wonder the if the, the the I can't help but wonder if they resolved the the, the copyright issue um, because of what happened with Disney. Uh, it was it was well before what happened with Disney and stuff. They've uh, okay. they they resolved this a while ago, um, okay. and it was it was a pretty big deal at the time when they did it. The uh, and it's it was exciting news because Black Milk Clothing was actually really really popular with a lot of um, a lot of uh, female Star Wars fans and stuff, and so uh, it it was a it was a good move in both both people's part. Now the one thing I don't like about the site, Christine, uh, are you still on the site? Uh huh. Did you look at the sizes? Um no, I was ignoring the sizes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The basically, if you pull up their size chart, it like is tiny or tiny. It is, it is the most <laughs> yeah, like large is is what I would call gloves. Um, <laughs> yeah. They basically come in zero, one, and negative one. For the yes, it's it's very very um, the the sizes and stuff don't scale to what real human women wear. <laughs> um, however, um, you know. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> the actual, actual women that don't, you know, break. So this is just a site for geek guys to go on and be like, I want my girlfriend to wear this, and yeah. their girlfriends don't like Star Wars at all. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, I'll, be not, <laughs> I'll be a little misogynistic for a change. Yeah, possibly just you know, a grand misunderstanding. Uh, one other thing that I that I that is uh, at thinking that I think is really awesome is the uh, Chewbacca and the Snake. Um, oh because, yeah, I it, saw that the, the other day. It's, it's awesome. It's, 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 it it's got the Star Wars logo on the leather. Did you notice that too? Oh yeah, it's an official product. 
Oh, what was it again? The Chewbacca what? Messenger uh, bag? Yeah, it's a messenger <laughs> bag. Ooh. So you got a messenger bag and you've got the Chewbacca bandolier. And uh -huh. you, you just reminded me, Casey, when you shot back to that. I, I meant to bring up um, that heruniverseshop.com, um, the store that Christine was talking about earlier, doesn't only have just line, uh, lines of clothing and stuff. They also have jewelry and everything. And in particular, um, what I wanted to bring people's attention to was this really cool pair of Star Trek Live Long and Prosper earrings. The the star it's the Star Trek logo, but instead of instead of the normal thing in the middle, it's it's the Spock hand. Mm -hmm. So, um, which, which link was that? I just posted it there. It's the it's right above Michael. Oh, okay, in the in our channel. Yeah, and they also have, I love uh, Battlestar Galactica, so I enjoy on there, they have some sci-fi channel shows like Battlestar Galactica, Warehouse 13, um, and I all the Battlestar Galactica stuff. Did, I think you, I, did you happen to see the crew neck sweatshirt with the Battlestar Galactica logo? Mm-hmm. That is um, excellent. I uh, Yeah, I go back and forth. I, I'm having okay, to, right, to right, knock it off my sweat, sweater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go down fighting. I am not. No. It's okay. the time of year for sweaters and sweatshirts, Casey. <laughs> no, it's not. Unless you're in Australia, which is where Black Milk Clothing is. Yeah. And so. I think they just have like a big misunderstanding about what clothing is supposed to be anyway. But um, Okay, where, where are we in the list here? Um, uh, let's, we haven't heard very much uh, from Michael. Uh, Michael, well, what, are things was, what are the things you have? One of the things I was thinking is uh, a couple weeks ago, Leo Laporte on Twitter uh -huh. mentioned that you shouldn't try and buy a geek a gadget because mm -hmm. we're so picky. Um, you won't get it right. We, we, we may be nice about it, but you'll get it wrong. You'll get us the wrong gadget. I know. Yeah. Um, so what he, what he suggests is that you, you find um, other solutions, things geeks wouldn't buy for themselves. Uh, and his example was that bespoke shaving kit set that he's been showing off on his shows lately. But yeah, one what, of the things what, I like to do... What is that? Explain that to us. Uh, I don't have a page up for it, and I don't have the bandwidth. Uh, it's a old-timey well, I mean, shaving just... kit with the brush and the cup and the mirror. Oh, I just okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Shaving powder. Okay, old tiny. Right. Okay. So are they right. saying that geeks need to shave more? Possibly, maybe <laughs> some geeks. And take it appropriately. There's also a, a, a bespoke coffee set with a French press and a little hand grinder and three I little uh, sealed jars of coffee. Um, but um, other things is. Uh, one of the things I got, uh, I'm getting for my wife is I'm taking her to a podcast in January. I'm taking her to see Greg Proops live. Um, a gift of taking them to an event is something you can't really get wrong if you think they'll like the event. Yeah, I drugged my husband to a, um, an event here called Nerdtacular. That was just a big geeky event. It was awesome. Yeah, I wanted to go to the Well, dragging kind of defeats. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that he came, like he could have said no. I would have let him get out of it, maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. And we we know him. There wasn't any dragging involved. Yeah, there wasn't any dragging involved. Yeah, okay. I tried to imagine. It's like, well, it's like hmm, well, now, now, which one of the two of them is the <laughs> is the alpha geek? Now, <laughs> and, so, and I don't know. I am I mean, they both. Michael brought so up brought, brought up basically a, a trip. Both. As a gift idea, and and I'd like to just go off. I've got a couple of those that I went out and found. One of them is this one that I just linked to right here. Um, Space Camp, believe it or not, has adult trips and family friendly what? trips. What? <laughs> adult trips? That doesn't adult sound good. <laughs> yeah, adult adult Space Camp. Uh, <laughs> you people, I don't... Raise your hand if you I'm, I'm that, if you've ever thought that theme. Christine was the one who would go there. Not me. Yeah, yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is this Space. a no, no. visit yeah. to the remake of Barbarella? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here you go. With, with all the so fur I, and everything. I, I'm sorry, but okay. <laughs> there's there, there's a space camp for grown-ups. 
<laughs> there's a space camp for grown-ups and also i mean if you've got a family and stuff they've got a space camp for families so you take your you take your young kids to space camp with you you guys go to, to you know you go and do all the things you launch a space shuttle i don't know exactly what goes on there but it's got to be exciting and fun um also well, along those the lines, same space camp it is the same space camp, but they have different programs depending on who they're, which audience they're targeting at the time. Well, let's look right. at the prices. I'm thinking young couples, yeah. young couples don't want to be uh, doing the same thing with families. With children. Yeah, that, there, that, there are no, there is a separate about. adult space camp, a separate family one, and then a separate kid one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Adult. <laughs> Sorry. That, that, Sorry. That's not right. We're not talking about honeymoon space camp. Aww. That would be so freaking that awesome. Was, why not? That was, like that, an that, all all inclusive, you know, resort no, I, okay, for uh, uh, okay, well, <laughs> for nerds. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, the the five of us are, are are going to sign a pact now, and we're going to develop a business model. So, because <laughs> now, was the uh, another well, another the, trip um, that I found is vacation plan from Star Trek: The Next Generation. Oh, Riza. 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 That's right. We need a Riza camp. There you go. More along the lines of Ryza Camp, I just posted a link here to jococruisecrazy.com. Now, um, Jonathan Colton runs this cruise every year in February. And, uh, Jonathan this year, Colton, amazing musician, funny guy. Yes, and so it is a geek-themed cruise is what it is. Um, it's uh, seven days, this year it's seven days Eastern Caribbean cruise. Um, they're visiting the Bahamas, St. Thomas, and St. Martin. Um, if you go and you click on the, if you visit the site and you click on the entertainment, you'll see that Jonathan Colton isn't the only entertainment. They have the double clicks, John Hodgman, Zoe Keating, Randall Monroe, Kevin Murphy and Bill Corbett from uh, Riff Tracks, uh, Paul and Storm, mm -hmm. Mike Furman, David Reese, Joseph Scrim Scrimshaw, and Will Wheaton. Or said properly, Will Wheaton. <laughs> <laughs> So I think um, I need to start planning my vacation for next year. <laughs> yes, and normally, by the way, Christine, if if because this the the cruise is in February and stuff, um, you're uh, they still have um, uh, berths and stuff available if you want to go this year, especially in the more expensive areas and some of the really cheap areas. Um, it's not just in February; it's over Valentine's Day. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so, right, so so because Christine is heading up. The uh, the Valentine's episode <laughs> project. Um, um, so I want to make sure that this that, that gets in. Um, so, but uh, then uh, uh, sorry, I had a point and I can't remember where I was going with it. I'm sorry. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with Will Wheaton getting uh, last billing? <laughs> no, I was I was really going to I was really trying to leave away the the Will Wheaton stuff because uh, um, anybody who's seen me at a convention where Will Wheaton is, um, I, I, not a big fan. Do you um, go a bit Sheldon Cooper? Do you? Not that bad. <laughs> yeah, he was genuinely not very nice to me. Well, we passed up Will Wheaton to. We passed up Will, the Will Wheaton line to see Paul and Storm when we went to PAX. Paul and Storm was sitting right next to him. There's this big, long Will Wheaton fan, and Paul and Storm's line was empty. And we're like, can we just get in to see Paul and Storm? We just want to see Paul and Storm. The, the last two years at Phoenix Comic Con, the Sci-Fi Surplus live podcast had to compete with Will Wheaton's story time. Um, and... Uh, and Will Wheaton charges, we pay people to come visit us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just posted the, the third and final link in my uh, geek tours, vacation sort of uh, gift ideas. The Lord of the Ring tours. <laughs> and I was really hoping Darren was going to be able to be with us today so that he could explain to us what New Zealand is. <laughs> um, it's a place to walk a lot. That's where the <laughs> hobbit, the hobbits live there. <laughs> so they More have a the tour, hobbit. a tour package that takes you across New Zealand and takes you to a bunch of Lord of the Rings experiences and stuff, and it's supposedly a lot of fun for those of you who are Lord of the Rings fans. So, but then when they show you the Hobbit hole, you realize that that's really a big door. <laughs> <laughs> It's to scale. You become a hobbit when you do right, Yes, right. <laughs> now, in terms of this, in, in, in memory of visiting a hole, um, Tunisia has immortalized the uh, location of uh, 
uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru's home on Tatooine, really? I believe. Yeah, they've kept the set, and it's open to tourists. Oh, shit. Is it all burnt, it's then? Just a question of, it's just a question of uh, if Tatooine, <laughs> if, if Tunisia is uh, itself open to tourists, considering <laughs> its vicinity uh, to the Middle East. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I don't that, think they have Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru uh, in cinders out front. <laughs> well, no, they, they, they cleaned it up for these things we call the prequels. But oh. I, but, but, because I believe that the set was used um, what, episode two. So. Um, I think they yeah. chose great foresight to immortalize that uh, location. Mm. Well, so the, where the set is, um, there are actually cave dwellings there that go back something like 800 years. So people have lived very similarly to that in underground uh, caves and shelters for, for yeah. almost a thousand years. So yeah. I think that's what gave me this. Now, in, in the, back to the uh, cruises, um, there's also uh, been uh, a uh, Lewis Black has had a cruise uh, <laughs> back in 2010, I believe, and his company assures me they're planning more of them. It's just a scheduling problem. Um, this, along with the uh, trip I'm taking, the uh, comedy show I'm taking my wife to, is mostly because our first date was to a comedy show. <laughs> so that's a lovely homage. Um, uh, I think of gifts. I think that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, talking about comedy shows and stuff if uh, if you're still looking to get somebody something special because uh, uh, my wife and I one time we went and saw um, what's his bucket from community um, live uh, at a comedy place and um, the uh, John I think posted a, uh, a fifteen hundred dollar eBay auction for uh, to go visit with the community cast uh, <laughs> see them on set uh, eat their food, have your body parts signed, sort of thing, for only fifteen hundred dollars. So it's a good deal. I only want to eat their food if they've eaten half of it, and I can eat the rest. Yeah, save a little bit of the DNA for me. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to blow everybody's minds by uh, dropping a link into the um, uh, into our chat, and it'll also go in the uh, the show notes. Uh, and okay, the website that <laughs> is, is called Flower Poop. It's a blog. Don't worry about that. They just happen to have the best pictures of this thing. Okay, and so uh, basically, what we're talking about here is a one point three five million dollar actual. Ooh, you can, you've got all quite you, you can buy one from them. You'll uh, have to say what we can buy again. You were muted. <laughs> it's a mech. It's, it's a mech. It, it, yes. And not, not only you, is it a mech, but I, apparently it comes with a very attractive female. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She is, she, she is the the uh, um, model slash pilot. I can only assume that for one point three five million dollars, that that her or a clone of her is included. Yes. <laughs> it shoots BBs, or at, least, or at least one of the inflatable ones. The system <laughs> will yeah. fire BBs when the pilot smiles. <laughs> well, actually, you can um, uh, get the optional 50 caliber Gatling gun. Is there an optional there? It is a military vehicle. I do not see Whoa. an option for a 50 caliber gun. Um, if you use depleted uranium, BBs will do plenty. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that is the one picture that is missing from this. Um, but if you go to the, the uh, actual the website... Um, which I can't do right now because it is a, a crazy mess. Of, I can't understand how to navigate it. Um, but they, uh, uh, there are lots of videos uh, that show what all the options are. And uh, it, it has um, replaced the... Oh, no, no, no. The very first one, if you look at the very first image that's on the top, um, you see by the hands uh, there, there yeah. is a black thing that's sticking out. That is a 50 millimeter gun, hmm. and they are on both sides. And so That's you, you a pair of 50 millimeter Gatling gun. Yes, and yeah, and the, the thing is rather a large. I have issues that it fires when the pilot smiles. 
You don't want to make her laugh or anything. You could be killing people. I, I, I'm not certain what that is about. That, that might be part of their, their funny joke. But I'm good. not familiar with a manufacturer that makes a 50 millimeter Gatling gun. Well, that's probably good. <laughs> Nerf gun? I think those are just BB guns, Casey. I don't think so. I think they rotate and it looks cool. No, the, the, the one that I saw from a long time ago, or it was, I say a long time ago, like two months ago, was the uh, 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 Heavy Industry, um, it, was, it was the website, but it was, it was the options for um, the, uh, uh, there was the uh, actual, Studio Bashi no, is the military. company. Yeah. Kuratas is the name of the vehicle, I believe. Yeah, I'm watching the video. Bashi is the manufacturer. I'm watching the video now, and they do the guns do spin, but they are just sending out BBs. Are they? Yeah. Well, that's I'm afraid so. Into the audience at that trade show. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like airsoft guns, then. That's, that's yeah, kind of, that's kind yeah. of. Yeah. Still pretty cool, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The link, I don't know if you guys found it, the link that I just put in there, that's the actual link for the company, it looks like. It's very cool. Yes, <laughs> yes, right. It's unnavigatable, and I just didn't have time to watch all the videos. Look, it's like you can get upgrades. Build your yeah, own robot. Right, yeah. Awesome. Robot pilot. <laughs> since, since we're clearly in the Japanese area of the show, I'd like to point <laughs> everybody's attention to Nekomimi ears. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> Neurosensitive ears. You put them on your head; they react to your emotions. Yes. Don't they also make a tail? Uh, probably, but I don't have a link to that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I saw these. At, I saw these at PAX. There was a lot of people selling them and wandering around with them. And it's kind of weird to watch them when people are talking, moving around, and drooping and. They're weird. I think they're weird. It, are, okay, now is it? A, I, I see that there's a microphone. No, that's it, where the that's where the brain sensor. Oh, goes. oh, that okay, okay, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> that makes sense now. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it senses your thoughts. So it's like you got these ears, and then you get excited, and it goes, <gasps> and then you get yes. you get bored, and it goes, and then you get horny, and it goes, <laughs> so. Well, no. There's there's. Um, <laughs> basically, there's either a lot of brain activity or there's not. They make a, a self-powered skateboard that works. Um, that is basically just you have you uh, um, you have a sensor on your head, and uh, because you can feel the skateboard move um, in conjunction with what you're doing in your brain, then you after a while you just kind of get a feeling for how you make the skate skateboard go. With your thoughts. The problem is there's not a way to make the skateboard stop. <laughs> well, you can turn off the brain. No, the skateboard keeps going. There's no, there, oh. there's, there's no second control. They only have the technology to have one control. They, you know. Well, we're we're a couple of years off hoverboards, yet, aren't we? Well, yeah. So, yeah. so basically, what you have to they have to be uh, two person skateboards. One person is in charge of going. One person. <laughs> yeah, the talking of the do by 2015, aren't they? Well, yeah, and, and talking of which, I found something pretty cool on a, on a website called Firefox.com, which I've put up, and you can now buy an electric DeLorean kitted out with all the Back to the Future stuff. See how? See what I did there with the segue? Did we, did you like <laughs> I, I don't see the link. Okay, I'll try again. Bear with me. It's where. I went to Firefox.com and I went and I ended up at Mozilla.org. <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't even go looking. I didn't want to end up there. <laughs> While John's trying to figure out how to use the oh, there he uh, is, there Firebox. Is. <laughs> Firebox. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, it's my cold again. Okay. It's it's only seventy thousand pounds. So mm. uh, that is that. sweet. Yeah. I Did like you? the. I like the villain chair over Thank here on the you, right. <laughs> Does that actually say flux capacitor not included? 
Yes. Yes, it yeah. does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's just you know, like so. It's Delorean. not all kitted out. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing it all kitted out. I'm, it's, well, it's just a Delorean. But they've they've got the iPhone app for it now, so you don't need the flux capacitor. <laughs> <laughs> if you look on the picture of the dashboard, you can plug your iPhone in. Yeah. <laughs> right, but the flux yeah. capacitor was on the back wall between the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, see, the, the fun of that would be uh, actually um, pimping the car out yourself. You know, so if you can go get yourself, you know, an actual DeLorean that drives, you know, you know, put all the all the uh, the stuff there yourself. It's much more enjoyable. They also no, have an a, electric a, a, DeLorean. Yes, right. Yes, it's an electric DeLorean. That's awesome. Uh, they have a replica Batmobile. 120,000 pounds. <laughs> the question is, does it actually reach 88 miles an hour? <laughs> oh, villain chair. Yeah, the villain chair looks sweet. Yeah. I was looking at the tent with the silhouette of the people kissing. <laughs> that, like, come, oh. that comes with it. <laughs> right, uh, right under, yeah, right over the you. Sex Panther clone. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. The, Wait, thing that looks the really professional cool. line, the professional line treadmill. Is that the one with the dog? The on it? Dog, yeah, fit for life. Right. Didn't, isn't somebody from the Jetsons gonna sue them? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah. No doubt about it. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, so uh, let, let's run through. Who else? Does anyone else have any other items that they need? Well, I have all my uh, comic book items. Yay! That I just uh, discovered. If you uh, go to marvel marvel.com, they have a gift subscription where you can give someone the gift of their digital comic subscription. Where I I haven't looked into it much. Does anybody have that already? Anybody? No. Nope. Oh, no. so apparently. No. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't I haven't looked into it. This was I um. But if I remember correctly, um, this is this is a selection to everything that's on their that's on their digital Good. site. It's like an unlimited one, mm -hmm. right? And this yeah. includes <laughs> this includes brand new releases. It's only sixty dollars. Yeah, right? it's like if you yeah, are a fan of comic books and and you go every week and you've got a hold box at the comic book store and you are you are picking up even one comic book a week. You will make this money back in about a third of a year. Yeah, it says you have access to over ten thousand new and classic titles. So, assuming that you only read Marvel comics. Yeah, and well, not yeah, that's the other thing. Anything else? <laughs> but, <laughs> but your other option, if you don't read Marvel, is if you go to comicsology.com, you can uh, gift specific comics to people. Their digital comics. So. If they, you know, Walking Dead, Six Gun, Fables, which are my favorites. So you can go and, but that one you kind of have to know what comic someone wants. The Marvel one's and nice. And what you tablet just, they have. Yeah. Uh, you don't actually with Comixology. Uh, with Comixology, you when you uh, when you purchase a digital edition on on Comixology, it works across platforms. Okay. So. Um, the, notice that their their uh, kind of their tagline is "Buy once, read anywhere." They really mean it, except for at my work where it's blocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not a um, anywhere. Comicsology yeah, problem. Comics. That's a firewall. <laughs> yeah, it's a comicsology problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All they need to do is buy a domain that gets through the filter. <laughs> Yeah, but then I'll have to go block it. I can find these domains really easily because I'm visiting them. <laughs> so basically, so what you're saying, Vince, is you are the person that's in charge of blocking yourself from having oh. the address. Oh, you have no idea how bad it is, Casey. When I was running for office, I blocked my own site. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was kind of self-serving on my part, though. I was like, nobody needs to be going here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then the last thing that I could probably spend hours looking on things is uh, the it, the website is shapeways.com, and it's 3D printing. Basically, 
people make designs, they send it in there and they'll 3D print it for you. And you can find, I found like D&D dice sets. I found a Bathleth corkscrew. I found a Stargate replicator blocks. Mass Effect um, tally pendant. There's just all sorts of cool stuff on there. And I think 3D printing is cool. So. And they're probably just restricted to the size of the current MakerBot, yeah? Yeah, I would assume so. Uh, it's probably... So I know uh, MakerBot, MakerBot's coming out with a larger size in the new year, I believe. There, there are other uh, 3D printers besides MakerBot and stuff. The right. and and considering the 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 strength of what they're doing and a couple other things, I doubt that they're using a MakerBot. Um, I watched. They have a video on their site where they show it like making one of them, and it doesn't. The one they're using isn't really that large. Um, but I don't know what brand it is. I don't know if they say on there. But yeah, there's. Yeah, I spent a long time, and well, you can. Get it and also they have like different um where you can get it from like cheap plastic to like heavier metals and I just think it's cool. I think I just have to get something just to get something that was three three D printed. Well, kind of on the subject of do it yourself, you know. Um, I'd like to bring you guys' attention to Adafruit.com. Now, Adafruit.com is one of my favorite websites in the entire universe. Um, it's basically a big fancy do-it-yourself electronic sort of playground. They've got Raspberry Pis, Beagle Bones, Arduinos, all of that stuff up the wazoo. And then where I really, really like, um, and I, I'm going to be purchasing from here eventually, if you guys check, they have EL wire and EL um, panels, electroluminescent wire and electroluminescent panels. It's like uh, neon that you can put on your clothing. Oh, costume so cool. ideas. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Or so, <laughs> Tron. <laughs> oh, Tron. There you go. Yeah. There was a, um, in fact, there was a, a costume. There was a uh, prom Tron dress that was, that somebody put together. Now, what did, um, you, call, what did you call this again? Adafruit.com? No, Adafruit, I'm there. The, the, Electroluminescent wire. Look for EL wire. Wow. They have panels. That's awesome. And if you look EL at this last wire. link that I just that I just posted right there, there at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. Check out that check out that Tron prom dress that that girl made. Oh, that's that is pretty cool. I like the light up bag Whoa. too. That, that, that bag is, is pretty cool. That's pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah. So anyway, Adafruit.com, check it out. And lots of and, and as far as do it yourself stuff, they've got a lot of blog entries to try to introduce you and try to get you going down the to be able to build this stuff yourself. Okay, but do they have gift cards? Because if I went to purchase something for Scott on here, I would have no idea. <laughs> so they need gift cards. Yeah, that falls in the category. <laughs> I would imagine they have to. Um, they have. Uh, I don't think they do. I don't think. I don't think they're a big gift giving no, destination. No, they are. They <laughs> are a very approachable company, though, and that's a great idea. If if you're really interested in it, I would contact them. Um, by the way, Lemur Freed, um, uh, who is the is is one of the founders of of the company. Mm -hmm. um, she was the first female engineer ever on the cover of uh, Wired magazine, hmm. um, which was a huge, huge deal because Wired magazine didn't have a problem with women on the cover. It just always put them in like scantily clad and stuff like that. <laughs> they had nothing to do with engineering. So, wow. Um, well, what's really cool about this site as well, from an international uh, perspective, is that, that you can display the prices in any currency alike, and they ship all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Along superb. those lines, the software that they use and everything is open source, and they actually uh, actively contribute to those projects in in uh, putting in patches and stuff for things like that, in order to make it so that other people can build uh, build their own companies with the exact same features. Yeah. I'm imagining the electroluminescent wire being fed to uh, evil mill. <laughs> so, yeah. raspberry. Wow, Although, there's all sorts of cool things. 
I'm guessing it's not water safe. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, it is. Um, oh. It's yeah, uh, it it's you really a safety container for a, a Raspberry Pi or something. But um, but it's low input. Yeah. Are you talking about the EL wire is water safe? Um, I wouldn't say. Yeah, oh. The idea isn't that it's water safe. The idea, in my mind, is if you get it wet, it doesn't kill you. Oh. Um, and even more importantly, if you get it wet, it doesn't turn into little tiny creatures after midnight. No.